Welcome to the Blue Victorian Winery. Uh, this particular winery has actually been around since 1889. You can find it in the uh, uh, Victorian registry. Um, what we're going to do today is what we usually start everybody off with is we're going to start off with our complimentary, which is a Pinot Grigio, which is a little bit different from your regular Pinot Grigio. This particular Pinot Grigio is uh, very, very crisp. It's uh, like most of the Visa white wines. They tend to be a lot uh, sweeter and the reds are a lot softer. So what we usually do is we start folks off with this as a complimentary to kind of get them warmed up. We usually get a lot of good reactions from this particular Pinot Grigio because um, all the wines here are handcrafted. So uh, from the picking to the actual uh, smashing of the skins and stuff like that, uh, you get uh, a really, really soft, fruit forward wine. So we get a lot of folks that are actually coming from Napa that really, really enjoy our wine. So. Uh, bright uh, fruit, a uh, little melon, get a little uh, pear. Really nice, uh, bright acidity. Um, really, really nice wine with seafood, especially uh, shellfish, um, oysters, lobster. I can't think of uh, anything much better. Absolutely. Yeah, we also like to coin the phrase too. It's not really necessarily, I would say, a wine term that I utilize with folks, but we call this a porch wine. So it's definitely a good summer sipper. So, so what we'll do is we'll head on to the next one. Our next wine that we have is definitely completely different from your typical Sauvignon Blanc. This particular Sauvignon Blanc has 25% Verdello blended into it. And Verdello is a Portuguese grape that's typically used for, you know, port wines. So it's going to add a little bit of sweetness to it. Now the sweetness that you're getting from this uh, Sauvignon Blanc is one that would particularly go really, really well with spicy food. Wasabis, Thai food, carnitas, things of that nature. So it's definitely really delicious. Normally we would go on to the 2003 Zinfandel, but we actually, uh, good news, like a week ago, we actually just sold uh, completely out of all of our 2003, which was actually the first vintage of the Wieser family. So what we're going to go on to is the 04. I know you don't hear a lot of or see a lot of 04s. I think I've searched in the stores in particular locations for wine that I really enjoy, and I haven't found an 04. I think the oldest I found in the actual stores was a 2006. So this one right here, being the age that it is, it's very, very mature, and it's kind of going from that really deep purple, like most Zins would have, to kind of almost transforming to the brick color, you know, like you'd see out of fireplaces would be made out of. You can really taste the maturity, and it is very, very smooth. You have a nice peppery finish on it, and it's just, it's just very delicious. All the flavors are just to a point where it's so mature, they're really, really soft. So if you get a person that's, I would say, younger, and uh, just kind of, you know, just dabbling their foot into red wines, this one would be perfect for them. And it's a rare chance for someone to have an 04 Zinfandel and you can actually see what it's like when it ages and this is a very age worthy wine. Now, cruising on down the uh, tasting road, the next one that we have is our 2005 Cabernet Sauvignon. Now this particular Cab 05, I mean it's, uh, for some people might still think it's youthful but I'd say it's, it, it's right at its peak. I mean it's very delicious, it's very very soft. So you're not going to get an overly tannic, you know, cab with this one like you would with some uh, Cabernets. The, ca uh, the tannins that you do feel and you only feel is on the side of your tongue, the bitterness. So you get really, really good fruit tannins as opposed to uh, oak tannins. And since the tannins are so soft on this, uh, this is better with leaner meats uh, as opposed to a ribeye. Uh, pair this with a filet mignon or I could even see it going with a, a, a game board, uh, such as a duck or quail. Our next, and I won't say our last because we have a few other little surprises up our sleeve, but this particular vintage is a 2007 Syrah. Now this particular Syrah is uh, it's very, very mellow. To me, I get pick up a, a, a kind of a smoky, almost a meaty kind of a beef jerky type taste to this one. It's not overpowering, but it's very, very subtle. That's what you think, brother. Excellent Syrah. Um, I, I call this a, a, a cross Syrah. What I mean by that, um, a lot of California Syrahs and Australian Shiraz in the same grape uh, tend to be very jammy and fruit forward, as, a, as opposed to uh, French Syrahs uh, like a, a Hermitage in the Northern Rhone tend to be meaty. This has a good combination of both. It, it, it's got some fruit, but it's also got that nice meaty gamey component as well. Um, this makes us a perfect pair for venison, elk, any kind of uh, game animal like that, large game animal, I think would be a perfect match. 
What we're going to do now, what we usually do is we offer um, our tour where we take folks down to the barrel room and actually blend wine in their actual glass for them. So we have a, a three wine blend plus two port style wines, a red and a white. The white, I must definitely say, is something like uh, you've never tasted before. So what we're going to do is I always tell the folks, hey, grab your glass. We're going to head on down to the barrel room. So that's what we're doing now. Okay. Now, last but definitely not least, what we have here. Um, the owner actually named this after his daughter, so it's called Sophie's, what the name of this one is, but it's a white dessert or white port style wine. Same concept as the red, basically fortified with a grain type alcohol, something that doesn't add flavor to it, but it's a Sauvignon Blanc grape. So it's going to kind of trick you on the nose, you're going to get that Sauvignon Blanc kind of smell, but it definitely has a, a lovely aftertaste. And like what I usually do on the tours, I like, like the people to throw out suggestions because I like learning and just to see if they can pick up what the actual flavor is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some to his glass. And like I usually do, I say, once you go and swish it around, taste it, and tell me what the first thing that you taste is. Right off the uh, initial attack, um, I, I get typical Sauvignon Blanc uh, characteristics to it. I get a lot of tropical fruit, passion fruit, uh, a little citrus. But then, uh, this, is, uh, this wine is what I call a boomerang wine. As it hits the back of your palate, you're hit over the head with hazelnut. Big, big hazelnut. Um, I love to pair this with semi-sweet desserts, um, kind of like a cheesecake uh, that's not overly sweetened, a fruit tart. Uh, goes great with nuts. Um, also goes really well with Italian hard cheeses like Asiago. Phenomenal match. Um, I've even paired it with sushi because uh, this wine actually has almost a brood characteristic to it, like a sake or a beer. Th this is a good wine, too, like we've mentioned before, for beer drinkers. Yeah, absolutely. Because there is a, a brood characteristic to it. Yep. And I also a suggestion we like to throw to folks as well is if you want to turn, you know, just regular vanilla ice cream into a hit, like a gourmet ice cream, drop a little bit of this on it, throw a mint leaf on the top or some carrot cake, and you're set. Hill is cast. 